And once we're done with our first component, I think this is an excellent time for me to show you the extensions I use, as well as my settings JSON setup. And first, let's start with two easy ones. So the ones that don't require much explanation, and that is auto rename tag and highlight matching tag. So if you want to take a look at those extensions, so that's how the auto rename tag looks like. And then the highlight one looks like this. Essentially, you just go search for extensions, you install it. In some cases, you might need to restart the text error. And after that, you're pretty much good to go as far as the auto rename tag. If I go here, and let's say select the setting two, notice right away, I'm changing the values in the opening one, as well as the closing one. So if I go here with heading three, and save, yep, I'll have the heading three now in the browser. Now when it comes to the matching tags, this is technically optional, you don't have to do it. But I just prefer when I select the element, I can right away see both of these tags. And again, the extension is this one. Now, once you install, probably your results are going to be tiny bit different, just because I customized the way it looks. So let me go here to the settings JSON and showcase that. And again, remember the repo I shared, that's where you can get the code. So let's keep on scrolling and notice over here, I have this highlight matching tag styles, and then I added these values. And essentially, if you want to know your options, just navigate to the docs of the extension. And essentially in there, they provide all of the details. So those are the easy ones. Now let's actually start working with some heavy lifters. First one is prettier, which is really awesome, because it formats the code. So if I go back to index.js, and if I do something silly like this, again, there's technically nothing wrong with my code. But imagine if all my files look like this. I mean, you would have to agree that it's somewhat annoying. So once I save, check it out. Everything is back to tip top shape. Why? Well, because I use this extension by the name of prettier. Once you install this extension, you'll also need to add some modifications to the settings JSON. So let me showcase that as far as the settings, we have two options. So essentially, we have this, the GUI. This is what we can basically see. And then we have settings JSON, where essentially we add rules to the JSON file. Now, as far as the settings, the ones that I prefer are format. And then I have format on paste and format on save. And also very, very important, otherwise it's not going to work, you want to set up your default formatter as a prettier. So let me go back over here. And then we want to go with default format. Yep, over here. Notice I selected prettier. So this is what you need to do. Most likely you'll have this none. And if that's the case, it's not going to work even after you install it. And then once you select this, once you go with prettier, in the settings JSON, essentially, you'll have no, that's for the M and that's not what I want to do. Let me showcase three me. it's probably going to be easier. You'll see editor format on paste format on save, yada, yada, yada. Then we have this one, the default formatter. And then these are just the rules that I applied again, you can search for them here in the GUI, or you can add them directly here in settings JSON. So as you can see, my preference is the single quote, and I don't use the semicolons. So if I change that around, of course, I'll have the double quotes and I'll have the semicolons. This is totally, again, up to you, you don't have to use the same settings. But then we've got Emmet. So throughout the course, you'll see me essentially do something like this, where I go with heading to, and let's say if I want to go with an ID, I go with the hashtag. And I'm going to call this I don't know, something, something over here. And then if let's say, I want to add a class, I'm going to go with dot, 
So this adds a class. And again, this is going to be some value. And check it out. I right away have this option where I simply need to press return or the tab key. At least that's my setup. In some cases, students have said that they only can use tab. In some cases, they say that they can only use return. Again, that's something that you need to check. In my case, I can use either of them. And notice the moment I press the enter or tab, I right away have this value. Now we'll discuss why this is a class name, not a simple class a little bit later. Don't focus on that one. What I'm simply trying to say is that in order to speed up development, effectively, I'm not going to type the opening tag and the closing tag. Essentially, I'm just going to type what element I want to add. And then if I'll use some classes, I'm just going to go dot and then the class name, the class name or the ID. Now, IDs are not going to be that often, but classes for sure will do this way. So we go with heading two. And now let me again type my first and then component. And essentially, this is done by Emmet. And Emmet comes by default in VS Code. So it's right away available. However, if we want Emmet to work in React, we need to add this code to our JSON. Now, you can also search for it in the GUI, but to tell you honestly, I find this approach more straightforward, where basically you go with this code, and once you add it, you're going to be good to go. If you want, you can copy it from my README, or you can just pause the video and type it. That's really up to you. Just make sure that you have this code. And just to showcase that I'm not making this up, I'll try to find it. Yep, it's over here. So Emmet, include languages, and we want to add JavaScript and then JavaScript React. And once you do that, Emmet is going to work in React, effectively in our components. And I guess the last thing I want to cover in this video is the awesome snippets extension. And this is super, super, super helpful extension. Uh, you're looking for this one. Now I'm too lazy to say the whole name. Just look for ES7. And then somewhere there, you'll see snippets. And essentially, this allows us to set up our components really fast. So remember, I said this is going to be our typical component don't have to type it ourselves. And we haven't covered the exports and imports and all that. But I'll showcase the typical setup. So let's navigate to the source. And we want to create a new file. So every time we'll need a new component, we'll create a new file, because components sometimes can be really big. Again, this is really up to you. If you want to jam all your components in one file, who am I to judge you? So let's go here with new file. And we can go with uppercase or we can go with lowercase. Just remember that the extension essentially is going to set up the component based on the file name. So I'm in a testing, I have installed this extension. So everything's in play, I don't need to add anything to the settings JSON pretty much once you're installed, you're good to go. And then you'll see in the docs that they have tons and tons and tons and tons of snippets that they provide. And essentially, you just want to click on snippets, and then be prepared to spend the rest of the day going through those snippets. So I'm not going to cover all of them. Of course, you can spend some time in the docs, what we're going to use pretty much all throughout the course, R A F C E which is a arrow function right away with export and then RFCE, which is a regular function with the export. So if we go to the testing, once we have installed the extension, notice, I have essentially right away these snippets. So this is going to create a component as a arrow function and notice how the names match. And if I go with the other one, if I go here with D R F C E, this is going to create a regular function. Now don't let this fool you. Notice over here how we're 
using the lower cache. It's only going to work because we will import it and we'll set it up with the upper cache. And therefore, for the most part, you'll see me essentially setting up files with the upper cache right away. So that way I know that there are gonna be no issue. Now, one last thing that I wanna mention about this particular extension is that once you initially install it, most likely you'll see this import for React on top of the file. And I think probably it's going to be faster if I just showcase the settings one. So let's navigate to the settings. We're looking for React snippets and we have this import React. So let me navigate there. So settings here, then we wanna go with React snippets. And notice over here how my one is unchecked. Most likely once you install it, it's going to be checked. So in here, notice it says that we need to restart VS Code and all that. And effectively what's going to happen, pretty much every time you run the snippet, again, it doesn't really matter which one, you'll get this import React from React. Now that used to be the older syntax. So prior to React version 17, we had to also right away import React. We don't have to do that anymore. Now, if you have the import, there's nothing wrong with that. So the code is not going to be wrong just because you have the import. But since technically we don't need the import, essentially we can set up our snippets extension to avoid importing React for pretty much every component. And again, if you navigate to the settings GUI, look for React snippets, and then you just need to uncheck it. Yep, again, we'll have to restart the VS Code. And just to showcase that I'm not making this up, I'm going to remove the testing one. Let me create a new file. I'll say test over here, JS. And now let me run the snippet. I actually prefer the arrow function syntax. So most likely throughout the course, that's the syntax that I'm going to use. And now check it out. I don't have an import for React. Again, there's nothing wrong if you do, but I just showcased how we can remove that. And also my component name matches exactly to my file name. So those are my extensions as well as settings JSON setup. In the long run, it will greatly speed up your workflow. And now we're ready to dive back into the awesome world of React.